Hey everybody, how's it going? It's funny, you get into the things you're into. Some of you like home lights, some of you like Max, Husky, Stills. Um, it's cool, we're all into our own little things. A lot of guys love Echoes. I haven't run too many Echoes. They are around my area. There's a few dealers. You don't see a lot of the big Echoes. By big, this thing's 67 cc's. It's a CS670. This thing's a turd. Okay, this is going to be a fun project. I don't want to sink a ton of money into this saw because it's bad. AV mounts are kind of loose on it. They don't, they aren't detached, but they are loose. Back of the case is broken or the cover here. Um, sprocket looks good. <laughs> Top cover is broken. Um, it's got Velcro, some kind of Velcro on the side. I think somebody made a snow cover. There we go. There, it's already 10 times better. This thing was gray at one point. Neat. <laughs> but I want to run this thing. I went to go run it this morning and uh, I can't get my screwdriver in the high and low jet. This thing's super rich, which is probably why it still runs so good. I can't get this thing to tune because I can't even get my screwdriver in the low jet. I'm not sure why. So let's have a peek. We're gonna run this thing stock. This thing has some of the highest compression of any saw I've ever personally played with. The compression's very high. I don't know if that's how all these are, but this is a high, high compression saw and uh, perfect candidate for porting, right? So. This is the next turd saw guys. I wanted to get going on this project. Uh, I got lots of builds planned, um, more home lights. I want to dig into that Mac 55. I uh, think we're going to do another 266 Husky. 5200 Poolin um, is torn down. I'm still thinking about what I want to do with that. Because you can't get a cylinder for that saw, I won't willy nilly just go in and grind away on it. So got lots coming down the pipe. But this one's for me and this one's for you guys. You guys have asked about this saw. You've seen it on the channel and I am I just want to play with it. So let's just do one for, for fun. This one's just for fun. We're going to try and get this thing running well, which it already does run well. It idles. It starts easily. It oils like crazy. The saw really shouldn't need anything, but we got to get this thing cleaned up, see what it needs, and then we're going to port this saw on the channel. I port 266s, they're one of my favorite builds. Uh, I love a stock 266 build, meaning I didn't put a big bore on it or anything. Something about those mid 60cc saws, um, they work well for me. You know, I mean, this, guys, this is probably my favorite saw. This old girl, she's got a sloppy clutch on her. She's got a hundred million miles, but um, I love this saw. You see me in the bush cutting firewood. Nine out of ten times this saw is going to be with me. I don't roll without my 266. So, there you guys go. Okay, let's take the top cover off on this thing and see what's going on. It's it's bad. Let's, let's put a rag on it or something and try and clean it up here I got you guys in a little bit closer like I said I went to go cut with this thing I was actually gonna clear some more blowdowns at my neighbor's place there and uh, I couldn't tune this thing at all let's see what's under the hood here I'm just gonna get you guys in a better spot guys in a better spot there you go I want you guys to be able to see it's not all about me it's about the saws right and if you can't see what I'm doing nice air filter on this saw yeah she's nice and clean so I don't know if that was replaced and it's funny like I have no clue how this even comes apart <laughs> so let me have a look here okay we got there's two screws underneath here. 
actually exactly like a 266, 272. I'm going to take this top cover off. See if we can get at this carburetor. I don't even know what it is. I'm get. I think it's a Walboro. Maybe an HDA or an HD. Let's see. Let's pull these screws off here. See what we got. I love working on this kind of stuff, guys. I know it seems stupid. I got all these nice saws, bigger saws. Um, not everybody has access well, this this cover is like stuck on okay so we got another anti-vibe here not everybody has access to all these crazy saws that you see the newer stuff you know that 461 i have uh, all that kind of stuff does that mean does that mean i shouldn't include you on the channel no maybe you can find an old echo or whatever right um and, and I'm going to say this because I was, for a long time, I cut firewood with an 025 still because that's all I could afford. And that's the truth. Wow. Look at that. Jeez. Wow. So this thing has, looks like some kind of intake boot. It moves quite a bit. Oh, I see. So it just kind of sits. Again, guys, never been under the hood of one of these. So that's nice. Choke rod just comes out. What do we got here? Okay, so there are two carb screws in there. They're absolutely loaded with crap. Looks like somebody took the limiters out of this saw. Fuel line's good. I, I'm shocked, guys. This saw's been on my shelf for, I don't know couple of years oh my look at this this saw has been on my shelf for a couple of years yeah that's just pitch guys it's melted welded right to the top of the saw this saw has been on my bench or my shelf for a couple of years my buddy gave it to me the back of it is broken see this somebody tried to glue it and I guess this is the ground screw for the switch. Well, the switch doesn't work. I actually shocked myself really bad on video uh, a couple weeks ago playing with this saw. I'm not sure if I still have that on video. If I do, I'll include it because it's funny. Uh, if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at? Oh, I see. So there was a screw that went through here that's missing. And that's probably what anchored. And that's why this thing is so loose. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. So it looks like this top cover screws to this base on the back here. Well, it's a little bit loose here. Well, there's no screw holding this side on by the looks of it. So, okay, can we get at the screws now? Let's put a little carb cleaner in there and see what we can get at. This is normal stuff for me. When you're working on saws, you're going to get ones that are real cruddy. In fact, a lot of these saws, I spend more time cleaning them than I do working on them. So if you want your saw mechanic to love you, bring them a clean saw. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we can get at the screws now. This, These limiters were like smashed out of here by the looks of it. That's terrible. Yeah, they're just like broken. So somebody just probably took a punch or something. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Not too squishy. Look at the side. Look at this thing, guys. This is good. So we might pull this apart. Let's remember this when we take the saw down. I might not remember to mention it. When we look at this saw, if we see heat related damage to the piston on this side we know why now generally the hot side wow this stuff is just absolutely stuck in here i might need to hammer and chisel this stuff out <laughs> this saw smells like burnt pine when you run it now i know why oh this thing's in rough shape just neglect i i think we can 
I think we can all say Echo makes a tough saw because this saw has never been cleaned. It has been abused its whole life and it still runs good. Now getting back to the hot spot. This is generally the cold side because the flywheel is spinning around. It's blowing air over here, right? Generally when you see a hot spot, it's in this corner. This side of the exhaust will generally be hotter. Okay. This is going to be the hottest side of the engine. Generally the air comes up through and blows through and out this side. This side doesn't get a lot of cooling and it's on the exhaust side. Okay, so we know we got to clean this thing up quite a bit. That'll probably be a job for... I'm going to have to Google chiseling pine pitch off of a chainsaw. Wow, this is bad. <laughs> oh, it just makes me laugh, guys. The saws that I see in here. There we go. Let's have a look at this piston. I'd like to take that spark plug out, but I'm kind of scared. Um, now, I'm probably going to wipe this thing down with gas. Oh, jeez. Probably going to wipe this thing down with gas and... Uh... <laughs> wow. This is impressive. This is the dirtiest saw I've ever worked on. And I've already blown this thing off, guys, just so that you could actually see that there's a saw under here. Wow. And I'm going to tell you guys something. Okay, well, I'm going to grab a hammer. I'm going to tell you guys something. This saw runs as good or better than any saw I've ever owned. This thing starts and idles. See if we can. There you go. First time, first time on YouTube, the chisel technique. Pro tip of the day. When you have pine pitch, just... You knock it out with a hammer and chisel. Wow. <laughs> Always bringing you first at Tin Man Saws. But yeah, this saw, guys, runs so good. And the fact I accidentally started it, just messing around with it. I've had this saw for, I don't even know how long, a year, two years. And, uh... My buddy gave it to me and I looked at it and completely dismissed it. Don't know my Echo models very well either, so. Um, I'm just going to dump this on the ground here. Oh, this is bad. I don't know my Echo models, so. There we go. And then one day I was like, one of my buddies or something was working on one of these. and He told me what it was and I said, I think I have one of those. I mean, you know. When you, when you become a saw nut, you pick up saws here, there, and next thing you know, you got shelves of saws, right? Maybe a shed full of saws. So this is just one of those random saws that I picked up and never really looked at. A lot of times saws like that, I'll just give them to a buddy that's looking for a project. Can't keep them all, right? I mean, I guess some people can, but uh, I try not to be materialistic in my life and uh that's working well for me i know this is great okay let's pull the spark plug out on this thing sorry guys for all this yakking and scraping uh, i've never seen anything like this before let's take our home light wrench scrunch pull this muffler off yeah I didn't even know what this saw was and then somebody I know was working on one and I was like hey wait a minute I have one of those oh so I pulled this thing down and then I threw it under my bench which is where I put things that have caught my attention and maybe I want to work on on the channel and uh Now, how does this come apart? Oh, there we go. And uh, I was pulling this over because I thought, ah, maybe I'll do something with this on the channel. Show you guys, you know. I'm sure there's Echo fans out there. And uh, I uh, 
I was pulling it over and I thought the kill switch was off. Well, the kill switch doesn't work on this. So I pulled it over two or three times and I'm like, wow, this thing has crazy, crazy compression. And then on the fourth time it fired and this saw sat there and idled. I couldn't believe it. Let's see the condition of this piston. We could find out right now. Wow. Look at this guys. I've never ever seen anything this bad. And this is after I blew the saw out by the way. But you know what the nice thing is? These ones that are really cruddy, these these kind of turd saws often clean up the nicest. That coating of oil. That coating of oil actually protects the saw, believe it or not. That oily just mung. Okay. I'll hold this up to the camera. Turn the light on. There we go. What do we got here? Looks like a lump of something fell in there. Let's get that out. Just going to get that out here, guys. Yeah, a little piece of dirt. Well, you guys see that? Looks like we have some maybe light, light scoring. Sometimes it's hard to see. Sometimes the oil... Actually, that cylinder looks pretty good. Let's see the piston. Now, one way to know this piston is still pretty good is you can see. Do you guys see the machine marks? There you go. A few little scuffs on it. See the machine marks in the piston? So this saw, I, I would take a guess that this saw is a low, low hour saw that was absolutely abused its whole life. Okay, unless this thing's had a piston put in it. Which is possible. Spark plug. So she wasn't run lean. Uh, dark sooty brown. This thing's almost where it needs to be. So that's a good sign. What do you guys think? This thing's quite the turd. Um, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to try and blow this thing off. I don't think a lot of this crap is actually going to blow off of here. Um, I might have to put gasoline on this thing. Uh, I could heat up this crud with a torch and maybe soften it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, comment below how you take 43 pounds of baked on pitch off of a saw. I guarantee to you guys though, we're going to make this a nice saw when it's done. Um, this is the kind of abuse that a chainsaw will put up with if you adjust the carb properly. Now, whoever had this saw took the limiters out. So they knew that this saw was too lean out of the box. So, all the power to them. Now, you can still, that, see how the piston's so dark? That piston has probably been getting hot on the exhaust side. Okay, I'm just gonna dump this again. That piston's probably gotten too hot on the exhaust side because of all the lack of cooling. You're not getting any air through there. There we go. We have screws. Here, let's see where this thing was set at. Okay. Wow. Two. That's a lot. Looks like this thing was two full turns out, guys. <laughs> wow. When I got this thing running, it's smoking blue and making all kinds of nasty sounds and gurgling. Okay. Well, let's put it back. I'm going to put this thing at... One and a quarter. So I don't know what somebody was doing with this saw.
Well, that's crazy. But the only reason why this saw is running today, and I can guarantee this, is that it was too rich. And it was probably run super rich. Now, I'm going to say something. I live in a northern climate. It doesn't mean that somebody was didn't know what they were doing. This saw could have been cutting wood in 40 below the last time it was run. When you cut in super cold temperatures like we have here, the saws tend to run very lean and you have to, you have to richen them up. Okay. So this time of the year, my saws are generally a little bit too lean to even start as it starts to get cold out or you start them and they, they're boggy. And that's when you want to take your low jet and you want to give it just, just, you know, just a squeak, just open it up a bit and they'll usually clean up. Um, for those of you that live in warm climates, you don't have that problem. Um, warm versus cold, you're going to have problems with heat when it's warm out. You're going to have problems with them going lean when it's cold. Also, bar oil does not flow well when it's super, super cold out. So that, that's a problem. You got to warm up the saw for a long time. Okay, well, we're going to have to really, really clean this saw and uh, we'll get back to it. Okay, I zoomed you guys back out. Um, 20 minute video probably on me scraping pitch from a saw. I want to show you guys what's what. This is the real deal. This is the kind of stuff I come into contact with. When I talk turd saws, this is a turd. Um, but it can be brought back, let me tell you. Um, I see nothing in this saw that makes me think it's good for the garbage pile. Nothing. The piston looks good. The cylinder looks good. The intake's not ripped. I got good fuel lines. Spark plug is clean. Um, it's got good spark. The clutch looks like it's in good shape. It hasn't been overheated. Uh, even the sprocket that's on this saw is good. There's like maybe an eighth of wear on it, you know, like an eighth of the life of it. Um, so we're going to have to clean up this exhaust port. Uh, I think I'm going to stop this video here. This thing's going to take a major undertaking to clean. So, um, I might just slap her back together the way she was and do a video of it running because realistically to clean this saw, I'm going to have to take it apart. This cylinder needs to be wire wheeled. And, uh, remember this creates heat. If your cooling fins are super dirty like this, you're going to overheat the saw. The only reason why this saw is still in good shape is it was probably used to cut firewood in the winter. Even though this pitch tells me this would be a spring scenario. When you're cutting pine in the spring, the pitch is really running, and uh, at least here, and uh, they get coated like this. Your bar will get covered in pitch, the front of the saw here. So, but this saw was probably used to cut firewood in the winter a lot. We do that up here in the north because um, firewood... Firewood splits really nice up here in the winter when it's frozen. So, um, I, I do a lot of my cutting in winter before the snowpack gets too, too high and then you just can't get at it. So, um, I don't do it for this year's wood, but next year and the year after, you know, the, the stuff I cut will be in winter because a lot of the wood here, it doesn't split very well. And I know everybody's wood doesn't split, but, um, we get a lot of wind here. A lot of knots and a lot of wavy grain and a lot of the stuff will hold together here a lot so i i like to split in the winter when it's cooler out so anyhow echo 670 turd saw i'm probably gonna label it that we're gonna get this thing going this is by far the dirtiest power saw i have ever worked on like the worst if any of you guys bring me a saw please don't bring one that looks like this this is awful, but I love it. I love being real with you guys and showing you guys what I encountered. Um, we're going to make this thing a ripper. I guarantee it. Okay, that's what I got for today. Uh, the next video of this saw, I'll clean it. I think it needs to be cleaned before we run it. As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Oh, and put in the comments if... Uh, if this thing's turdy enough for you guys. I know you guys like the turd sauce, so...
Is this thing turdy enough? You tell me. <laughs> Take her easy. <laughs>